lay out a few things for you. Not much about me, but it's a lot about the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, thanks for uh, the grace of God being able to get up. And thanks for the grace of God to have some, uh, some, some men that would uh, be willing to help someone be restored. Restore and then help someone, help someone else restore. I don't know. I don't know where y'all at on that. But uh, look at Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 4 as we jump into this. And as we jump into this, you know, I look in the Bible and I just don't see uh, a lot of times we'll say, oh, you're the number two man. Number two, you're second man. Second man. I don't see second. I see God say uh, Paul and Timothy. I see God say Moses and Joshua, but I never see him say first and second. Just throw it out there for you. Oh, you're the second man. God don't call you the second man. Let's get that human stuff out of it. We can go a lot farther. But here in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, I want to see something here. Look at verse 9. And you know know these, but let's put it all together with what's been said uh, here about, uh, it says in verse 9 that uh, two are, are better than what? Well, why are you still one? Two's better than one. Uh, just right there. It should be enough. You know? But uh, uh, he goes on and said, because. And they have a good reward for their labor. And uh, for if they fall, we talk about falling. But if they fall, sometimes you just trip. Sometimes you don't see it there. I just fell last week. And I didn't see the little thing the people sit on to try the shoes on. You know that little thing that being there, you sit down, it was in the middle of the aisle, and somebody was pointing, oh, it's that way. And I'm like, well, they say over there. I said, oh, okay, boom. I fell. My knee is coming back around, you know, but, uh, but that knee was, was kind of hurting. But, uh, but here he says this. But whoa, well, no, for verse 10. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Will. I'm just saying, I'm thinking about what we done heard this morning. What we heard this afternoon. Will. This is not a maybe, might do suggestion or something to think about. This is something you do. You help them up. You help your brother up. All right, you guys got it. You connect the dots. You know, I was just sitting right there and God gave me this. It's not in the outline. Holy Spirit is working. Hey, this is a spiritual conference. Have you figured that out yet? It's not a show of the flesh conference. Okay, it's a spiritual conference because there are spirit-led people allowing the Holy Spirit to have preeminence, allowing the Holy Spirit to, matter of fact, surrendering but also yielding. Yielding means to give way. Yielding is what you do when you go on the highway, you're on the ramp, you're supposed to yield, let the other guy pass that's out there on the highway and you slide in. So yielding is letting the Holy Spirit have his way, letting the Holy Spirit get out front, letting the Holy Spirit, you follow me? That's what kind of conference this is, and I like it. But it says, for, for if he fall, the one will uh, uh, lift up his fellow. And whoa, 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 to him that is alone. Hey, what are you, why are you still alone? You you got, hey, look, it's got to change. Nobody should leave this conference being in their mind, in their heart, being alone anymore. You don't have to be alone, okay? I mean, a pastor said, fine, a train, but we don't have to be alone. And uh, he goes on and says here, uh, uh, help him up, verse 7 again, if two lies together, then they have heat, but one can... Can, can one be warm alone? No. Verse 12, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand. Now look, you was good fighting the one devil, but now Satan sent three of them to you. You can't handle the three. You need to be standing with somebody. Pastor, leader, everybody's okay? Let me make sure, because we just, we didn't even, this is not even in the outline, but it's in the book. 
It's in the instructions. And he, he lays this thing out here. He said, if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So you can have more than one. I always, uh, in, in, in ministry, of course, going from 400 to 2,000, I always had three armor bearers. I kept three or four. What, to have an entree? No, no. Because with three or four, more can get done. With three or four, I can get more done. I can be more for God. God can use me. Look, my channel, I become a channel of blessing, but now my channel is bigger. It's wider for God to bless more through. Are you listening? Now, uh, I'm that instrument in God's hand, but because it's four now or three now, it's a bigger instrument, a tool that God get to use to do a bigger job. Amen. Amen. All right, man. I feel like preaching coming on right there, but we're supposed to be teaching, so... We're going to do some teaching, but we just lay that out there right there or something to look at. Now, get your Bibles. You got your Bibles already. Turn to 1 Samuel 16. I like to really lay out some things uh, uh, on the, the subject of armor barrel. And uh, but again, there's about 100 points. So I don't want to deal with that 100 in one area. And there's another 100 going down the other way. So we're just going to lay out some things here and uh, future coming. You will see perhaps some books and different things. But for now, let's just get some basic understanding here of uh, ministry and uh, that there's no long rangers in ministry. Uh, Jesus, uh, he wasn't a long ranger. I mean, Jesus could have moved the stone himself from Lazarus' grave, but he let some others help him. He could have fed the 4,000 and the 5,000 plus himself. I mean, he could have used some angels. He could have just spoke it into, you know, whatever. But what did he do? He used others. Jesus wasn't a long ranger, so why are we alone? But uh, here in 1 Samuel 16, let me pull something out here. Verse uh, 21. It's David. I like David. I, li I like David. I like those misfits that David was willing to work with. As a matter of fact, I like the ones that didn't like the way Saul. Look, they watch how Saul treated David. See, see, they, they, they got firsthand to see the javelins coming towards David, and they watched David not reach back and grab it. And now David was a, hey, a warrior. All right. And so I watched uh, many of them come to that cave and join themselves with David. They left Saul. They left Saul. They went to David. They saw him. You look at chapter 18 of 1 Samuel, and you'll see how they respected David, how they held David high, and how they loved David. Everybody's all right? All right. So, but right here, look at verse 21. Oh, this, is, this is about David. And David came to Saul and stood before him. And, and, and get, get, get David now. He loved him greatly. He loved, that's important that, 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 that person, pastor, uh, that person that's, that's standing beside you, that person that, that's carrying the, help carrying the load, that person that's not wearing your armor but can help you dress out in your armor or uh, hold up your armor, give you the sword you need for that fight, the bow you need for this one, the arrow you need for that distance, that person needs to love you. Uh, you know, it's not just anybody. It's somebody that loves you, okay? And uh, he loved him greatly, the Bible says, and, and he became his what? Armor bearers are someone that loves the person who armor they carry. They love them. Charity. Love. And because, I, because I'm willing to express love, I can uh, experience some joy in my service. Uh, because I'm willing to express love, I, I not only get to enjoy some, uh, 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 you know, experience some joy, but I get to exhibit peace. You see it in my countenance because I love him. 
And, and now, because of that love that uh, is expressed and that love that allows joy to be experienced and, and the peace to be exhibited, now I can enter into some long suffering with that person I love. Are you listening? That's love. Matter of fact, that's the love of the Father. That's the agape love. That's charity. And, and because of that, I want that person to carry my own. I want, that's the one I want with me. Okay? And again, every, every leader in here should have an armor bearer, period. Joab had nine of them. Remember when Absalom was hanging from the tree? And Joab put, and all the other ones came and did likewise. It's okay to have more than one, Pastor. It's okay to have more than one. In fact, you get more done. You get to reach a, a bigger potential. You, you get to reach your potential and go beyond your capacity with more than one. But right here, uh, he became his armor bearer. And Saul, verse 22, sent to Jesse, that's his father, and saying, let David, I pray thee, stand before me. For, I, uh, for he has found what? Favor's important. Favor. No, no. Hey, did, did Esther find favor? Did Ruth find favor over in that field? Huh? Favor is key. Fa favor is, is very, very important. Maybe we'll come back around to favor. Then again, that's a whole nother chapter. But favor in my sight, that's important. Uh, uh, let me ask you, who's standing with you? Who's standing with you? Who's standing with you, leader? Who's standing? And I'm not talking about your wife. Because really your wife wasn't made to carry that armor. She's willing. She jumps in there with you the first three, five years passing her. But she wasn't made to carry that armor. Matter of fact, she needs her own armor bearer, Naomi. She needs Ruth. <laughs> we'll get to that. That's a whole nother thing there but but uh but who's standing with you uh, get that load off your wife then she can last longer she won't run into the nervous breakdown then you won't have to go home and be trying to correct her spirit Man, like i said now hold on now i know I, you know it's all right i'm okay right here uh, but that love, okay, allows us to enter into long suffering where we can empty out or we can really become gentle. That's where the gentleness, isn't that the next one? We're praying to be gentle, but we're not long suffering. See, that long suffering is an enduring temperament that expresses itself with, the, with impatience with the shortcomings of others, Pastor. I know David had a lot of other shortcomings around him in the cave. But without that, I can't be gentle. And I remember David saying in 2 Samuel and over in Psalms 18, 2 Samuel 22 and over in Psalms 18, uh, David meant, said, said, thy gentleness has made me what? Great. What makes great? Gentleness. Greatness makes gentleness. Hey, look, gentleness makes greatness, dad. Husband. Pastor. If Ray or Boy would have caught a little glimpse of that, the old dudes, they say in California, that's where I came from. You know, the wind blew me over this way. California, they've had an earthquake, so I was trying to get away from the earthquake. Hit a hurricane. I'm like, what's this? They say it's a hurricane. But anyway, <laughs> no, that got to do with anything. But it's the gentleness. 
He said, he said, if you'll talk to them gentle, if you'll be gentle to them, they'll serve you how long? Forever. Amen. You go read. When Jeroboam came back, so Solomon wasn't the wise Solomon anymore, and, and he had to run off to Egypt. But when he came back, he said, man, if you be gentle to these people, if you speak kindly to them, they'll serve you forever. Children don't want to be home forever. You have to be like, come on, it's time for you to get out, girl. <laughs> come on, son. Now, that's not, you know, I'm having fun now. But it's all good. It's all good. It's just that, uh, uh, but favor is important, we see there. And I want to give you, let me just tell you about an armor bearer, because you're like, what's this armor bearer thing all about? An armor bearer is an officer selected by kings and generals um, because of his, first of all, bravery. You need some boldness. You need some courage. Now, his bravery. Not only to bear their armor, but also to stand by them. You need somebody to stand by you. And, and, and that's a big deal, to stand by them in times of danger. That's Webster of 1828. But in many ways, the armor bearer is a servant leader. You mentioned servant. It's a servant leader. He or she, Ruth, is not looking. I don't like to leave the ladies out. Not looking to be number one. They're just looking to serve. I love you, and I want to serve by you. They're all around you. You don't even recognize them. I remember Shane Irwin, Marine. That uh, I met him. I met him at. Uh, uh, God allowed us to start a, a, a Baptist service at Miramar Air Station in San Diego. I said, man, they let the Baptist Baptist service took our King James Bible in a Baptist service on Wednesday because we had our service. Don't take this out on Thursday night midweek service. Oh, no. oh man! So Wednesday we went in there, <laughs> went in there, and Shane Irwin got came. Uh, Shane Irwin was uh, the Marine and. And, and I was looking for another armor bearer to add in there. I'm traveling a lot, moving a lot, working with, you know, so many people. And uh, my wife said, what about Shane Irwin? I said, Shane Irwin? Who's I never talked about? I never even looked over there at Shane Irwin. And then I turned and started looking at Shane Irwin. I'm like, huh, hey, he's faithful. Yeah, honest. Sort of like the criteria that they had that over in uh, Acts 6. You know, I'm like, okay. Sort of what Barnabas had when they explained Barnabas in chapter 11 of Acts. He was a good man. Remember Barnabas? I'm like, man, the Holy Spirit led. Why well, I never looked at him? He's there under my nose all along. So, okay. Well, you know what's got to happen next? Train. It's either train shame i call down to the car and say, provide me a man. Shane was right there all along. Homegrown. Abraham took the train men in his home. Huh? You train them, you can trust them. Used to be a time we started church, we knock the doors, we bring them in, we disciple them, and yeah, they become our deacons. They become our head ushers. They... Yeah, that's right. Won't you try training somebody? They're right there. Shane's right there. Train them. That's all it takes. But bravery, danger. And so and many times that servant leader, this is the concept that emphasizes putting the needs of others before our own. This approach to leadership involves leading by example. It involves empowering, delegating, 
okay, and, and uh, those around us. And working takes work to lead others to their capacity. And so I want to talk about leading someone to their capacity. How do you lead someone? Because without the capacity, you're not capable. Capacity to space, the capability, without that, you'll never reach your full potential. You won't get to very many potentials. And so it's important to, to, to know your capacity. It's very important to get someone to their capacity. Sometimes that might mean to move them around a little bit. You're thinking, man, where can I put so-and-so and where can this one fit? No, no, just put them somewhere. And then be willing to move them till you hit that place. And when you hit it, you'll know it. Because God will say, like, like, God will say, okay, that's it. Matter of fact, God, when I, when, I, when I asked my wife, my wife said, Shane, God said, yeah, him. See, I know you was watching the other four or five guys. You know, you thought it was Eliab. You thought it was the eldest brother. But it was him. What do you mean him? Him that was not even in my lineup. David, dad didn't even have me in the line. It was him. And the way God uh, 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 chose to let me know it was him was through my wife. Yeah, God speaks through wives. Remember Abraham? Oh, but Ishmael. Oh, oh, Lord, Ishmael. No, 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 no. Listen to Sarah. Do what Sarah said. Gonna be Isaac. Everybody's okay with that. God speak through women. Hey. Rebecca, the one knew about who the twins. Was it Rebecca? Did I got that name right. Did she the one knew that the eldest was gonna serve the youngest? Isaac didn't know nothing. Isaac like do 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 do. Some of where I'm the pastor, where I'm in charge, or I'm the husband. I mean, I'm okay. <laughs> do, 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 do. It'd be good to listen to your wife. But uh, I don't know, you might not like that, but God did that sometime. Thank God that David listened to Abigail. Would have blemished his whole kingdom. Maybe some of us need to listen. I know we're the pastor. And I know we're the ministry leader. And I know we run the music and we run the sound. And we, I know, I get it. But maybe it's good to listen to them a little bit. At least hear what they have to say. Amen. All right, that's all right. That's not going over too good. But it's okay. Uh, but, but look, guiding leaders to, I'm glad I listened to my wife called Shane. Shane allowed uh, God to use me to take 10 people to 260. Amen. Within that little, that little 2000 setting, that's what Shane allowed me to be able to do. So I'm glad I listened that one time. <laughs> Don't say amen, huh? my wife, right? Don't you say amen. But... Uh, don't mess me up. Mess me up like that. I'm trying to get a reputation or something. Well, go ask her. She'll tell you all about me. Amen. Guiding leaders to their capacity helps the pastor. It helps the church. It helps the staff. It helps. And we have to learn how to do that. Now, Look back at verse 17. You're in 1 Samuel 16. It doesn't matter how far we get on this. I don't need to get too far. I just, I just said a little something. Maybe I'll come back and, and, and deal with it some more. But there's more to come. And uh, that it should have been done, put a lot of this out. And, you know, forgive me, Pastor King Bear. I should have been working on that a long time ago. 
But God's good and God's time is always right. He's right. He's always right. Verse 17. And Saul said unto his servants, provide me now a man that can play well, got skills, and bring him to me. Verse 18. Everybody there? First Samuel 16? Say amen. amen. All right, there we are. Then answer one of the servants. You see, this is how God going to do this. He's going he gonna to do it this way through one of the servants. And said, Behold, hold up here. Wait a minute. I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and planning, playing. He got skills. And a mighty man of, a uh, valid man, valiant man, a man of war, prudent in matters of slash business. And comely person, that, get, that kind of eliminates many of us on that comely person, some of you guys. But, and, but watch it, though. Here's the other one. This is a, probably the most important one right here. And the Lord is what? The Lord was with Shane. Erwin. I, I want to know, is the Lord with him? I want, I want to see the Lord. I, I, you know, you say faithful. If he's faithful, she's faithful. You're going to see the Lord working. Through. And, 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 and so, so this servant was able to see that the Lord was with them. And the servant recommends someone from the college or someone from wherever that the Lord was with. That eliminates a lot of mess. That takes away a lot of headaches and stress. Hey, look, that causes you not to have to put out many fires. Why? Because the Lord is with them. The Lord is with them. And so, <clears throat> are you really looking for help? Are you really looking for help? Because when you start looking, God say, there they are. I'm afraid we're not looking for whatever reason. I might not be ready to let go. I could still be a little full of myself. I could still want to be able to show you how intellectual and analytically inclined I am. And how much talent and skills and uh, abilities that I have. And so I might even be a little insecure with uh, uh, your, your ten thousands. You know, I only got thousand and, and I ain't ready to let go to this guy and this gal that's, that's running. running, running. You know, they have that influence over ten thousand. What about me? Well, don't I supposed to decrease? If I decrease, the church will increase. If I decrease that ministry, that Sunday school class will increase according to the proportion of the decrease. Amen. Wow. So are you really looking for help or are you praying, God, help me? Right. Yeah. Amen. Now, now, at capacity, when when you as a leader, I'm going to say pastor leader. Because that Sunday school teacher that is an extension of the pastor and, and, and that person needs to be little in their own sight because they need to see themselves as an overseer. And they're, they're shepherding people, but an overseer, it's not their thing. You know, it's still under the, 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 the authority there of the pastor. Now, when that, when that person reaches their capacity, they're not going to reach their capacity without another leader. The first thing a leader needs to do is find an assistant. Pastors need someone. The leaders need someone. Let me just say this. 
I learned this from, I, I, I learned this somewhere. I was around uh, 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 Doug Fisher. Maybe I mentioned uh, uh, Brother Fisher. But um, when we make followers, making followers, and some of us like followers. When we're into making followers, we add. But when we learn to make leaders, then we multiply. They multiplied in Acts. David multiplied from 400 to 1.5 million when, when, he, when he numbered Israel to 1.5 million. You multiply when you make leaders. Your goal needs to be to make leaders and to start a new class is making leaders. And that's how you multiply 10,000. <laughs> now, when they reach their capacity, then you, pastor, your load is balanced. See, at, a, at another person, your leader's capacity, then they get to balance your load. And, and not only does it balance your load, balance your load, it broadens your liberty. Now you have the liberty to make more visits, the liberty to, to, to start another ministry, the liberty to, to go here and preach, the liberty to, to put a little more uh, uh, meditation into that sermon. You understand? That's certain preparation. You get the liberty, and, and now you, 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 know, you don't have an edge, a little cutting edge on that sermon. Because that load can cause you to have a little edge on there. It gets to balance the load. It gets to broaden the liberty. And it gets to bring you longevity. You last longer. You listening? David need Abishai on that second giant. I think it could have been Goliath's brother, but that second giant, the one that had David pinned down and Abishai came to his rescue, without Abishai, David would have been a dead man. Abishai had allowed the longevity to continue. Abishai was there to allow him to go farther, further and farther. Who's by your side? Who's there with you doing spiritual warfare? You say, well, I don't believe in spiritual warfare. Okay, well, who's there with you when them devils come after you? Amen. I bet you he was glad Abishai was there. And they wasn't going to let that light go out anymore. We got to keep this light burning. So it caused that light to even burn brighter. So you need that armor bearer. Increasing your leader's capacity, increasing your leader's capacity. Give them more to do. Just be flexible. Be, you know, keep your hand on the pause. You need to pull back, pull back, you need to move them around a little bit. Increase their abilities, give them more abilities. But they need more than skills. And we see with this guy, he had more than skills, David. But uh, you want to do that because uh, uh, when you increase this capacity, it increases your potential. It increases your potential with the capacity. All right? You need that because God has more for you to do. God, what's next for you? I mean, what's really next? I imagine Elijah didn't know anything was next in that cave. Oh, okay, you dealt with a little depression. Okay, I understand. Big depression. Okay, I understand. A long one. I was in one for a whole year. I'm like, am I going to ever come out of this? Am I supposed to be like this the rest of my life? And I needed somebody to come to me like Jonathan and say no. You're going to be all right. I, you know, I had enough up judging me. I know, don't call me up to you. Repent. I said, repent of what? What did I do? You know, I don't know. Tell me. 
Whatever's going around out there, what did I do? That thing last, that thing was heavy. When David talked about the heaviness, sometimes God, you hit something heavy. You can't handle that by yourself. And, 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 and I, I, got, I, got, I got friends, people that they took themselves on out. What's the pressure from the brethren? Thank God for someone that'll lead me to capacity. Because I'm thinking, I don't know if I can do it anymore. I don't know if God can even use me on that level, more or less that level. I'm just trying to get up, stay up. Are you sure of that? It's a little personal, but it's okay. I like being transparent. You can trust, you can trust people that's transparent sometimes, you know. But David here, and we, 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 we can close it down, but right here in verse 17, 18, uh, this is an excellent person that we would call a second man or a second woman. But I don't like that. It's just somebody that's helping with the work. It's like in the military, I was the 06 advisor for the enlisted. Take the 06 philosophy down to the deck plate, they would call it. You know, and it's just, just kind of getting it down there. It's one mission. And is this mission going to be completed successfully? We all got to work together. Dislikes, all that aside. And so, so, so it takes a little bit more than skills. Yeah, you can shoot straight. You sharpshooter, maybe expert. But it's going to take a little bit more than that. It takes some honor, some respect. It's going to take some, some honesty. And so here David exemplifies that. And I think I'll just hit on that a little bit and let you guys get out and get some sleep. They call it Baptist, Baptist now. But an armor bearer has the capacity to carry physical armor. And an armor bearer has an unwavering commitment to carry the weight of their pastor slash leader. Carry their vision and carry their purpose. And you can't carry that purpose and vision by yourself. Hey, Nehemiah couldn't. He got a couple men, a few good men to walk around that thing with him, that wall with him. You can't do it by yourself. You can't carry that vision and the purpose that God has for you by yourself. And you're not supposed to put that on the missus. Right. Too many times, I'm telling you, I, I do too many times, it comes home and laying on her. When all you got to do is go out and get some help. Now, I'll say this. Doug Fisher made me an armor bearer, which led me to reaching a level of capacity, a level of capacity that made potential possible. Are you making potential possible for your followers, for your congregation, for your staff, for your family, children? Now, David here, you remember, well, you said, I don't know about this capacity thing. Well, Jesus had a one, that'd be Peter. Spent a lot of time with Peter. He had a three. The three could handle what the 12 couldn't handle. They had a different capacity. The 12 had a different capacity than the 70 that went out. And by the fact, they went out two by two. Right. Weren't no long rangers out there. Okay? So there's different capacities. 
Moses, you remember when he got his counsel from Jethro and there's different opinions about things, but the point was you're going to wear out. If you don't make this adjustment, adjustment or change, I know I like adjustment, but if you don't make it, you're going to wear out and you're going to wear those people out that's standing in line to get to you. So you need somebody else to help you with that. And, and so, 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 but everybody has a different capacity. Somebody had the capacity for 10. Somebody had the capacity for 50. Another one has the capacity for 100. Another one has the capacity for 1,000. Are you listening? You got to find their capacity. And you're going to have to just be willing to move them in and move them out. I would create scenarios. I would create a situation where somebody had to move. I didn't let people get comfortable. Easy on you guys. Yeah, you got stages we're working on here. But I'm just saying, you know, because you need to maintain the flexibility. You need to stay flexible, adaptable to grow. And so I might shake it up so the class had to move somewhere else and have class that's a little more rougher, a little more hazardous, just so they can get prepared. Okay? Why? Because I want them to have the capacity for what's next. Because there's some vision, there's some purposes, there's some things laid out that you don't know about. But when the capacity is there, then they come out. And so we're trying to get people at the capacity where they can handle that. Because I'm going to tell you, 100, 100 Sunday school classes just for, for, for our church, 100, look, that's just so we can make progress. Okay, that's not the goal. That might be a short-range goal just to, you know, get some progress going. And so you're going to have to be able to have the capacity for that. And so it's a process. But you need more than just skills. It says this about David. It said that uh, he, he, he was, uh, um, what it says right there, it said he... Um, Well, the first one there, he had skills, cunning, but he was a mighty, valiant man. He had strength, man of war, prudent in matters. Now, how do you get this? By being trained. Somebody taught him. It just didn't happen. Somebody taught him. And we got to be willing to teach. Now, uh, them. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go too far into that. I just want you to know that you need an armor barrel. And come back tomorrow and find out a little bit more about uh, uh, how to get them set up, how to identify what's the characteristics and different things like that. Because with that armor barrel, he can lead, she can lead, she can manage, she can organize, he can organize, he, he can encourage, he can oversee. OK, and I don't want you to confuse a manager from a leader. When I travel around and work with staffs, one of the first things I see is they got managers in leaders position. And there's a difference between a manager and a leader. A manager maintain a system or maintain people or maintain some process you put together. But a leader, he used that thing you mentioned influence. He can inspire. What do you mean inspire? Pour something in somebody. There's a difference. And you need to be able to identify the difference before you make a major mistake of putting a leader, I mean a manager in a leader's position, and you're expecting great results. And then you get mad at the person. You fire him or quit them or pull the rug out from them, and it was all you're making. You just didn't know. So we'll get more into this a little bit. And God bless us. Pastor, uh, uh, you want to come and uh, close us out?